I just built a new shed and decided to add a small 12 volt solar system for lighting. Now I am not presenting myself here as an expert in solar energy. I do want to show that you don't have to be an expert to set up your own system. This is my first. I'll give a quick overview and then for those of you interested in a more detailed explanation that will be coming up here in a bit. So I went with a Renogy 50 watt solar panel and attached it to their horizontal mount. The front of the shed faces south so it's a great location. The cables run along the ground secured with tent stakes and up behind the trim where they enter into the shed. Inside the shed they are attached to Renogy's Wanderer, it's a 10 amp charge controller. Other inputs to the controller are the positive and negative connections to the battery as well as to the load. In my case that's the lighting. I also got Renogy's Bluetooth module to monitor the system on my phone. Now this isn't a necessary item for the system, I just thought it would be cool to have. The battery is a small 12 volt 7 amp hour lithium battery capable of running my lights on its own for just under an hour straight. It can be fully recharged with the solar panel in a little over two and a half hours. I'll get into how to figure all that stuff out here in the detailed section coming up. Connected to the load inputs of the controller I have six 10 watt LED floodlights and a 5 meter blue LED strip. Now my family and friends tease me about my light obsession so I couldn't disappoint them here with this build. I'll show you some cool night shots coming up. I put two switches on the panel, the one on the right provides power to all of the lights and the small one on the left is branched off of that switch to control just the blue LED strip. It's a simple setup, it really just comes down to a solar panel that generates and sends power to the charge controller which is the brains of the system and then the charge controller keeps the battery charged and provides power to whatever you're needing power for. And there was no soldering any connections in this system. I used some handy input connectors to tie everything together. Okay, here's how it looks at night. I was actually surprised at how well using only six 10 watt LED lights would light it up. Now with this current system I have the ability to add one more floodlight but I really don't feel I need it. So that's it for the overview. For those of you interested in the calculations and more connection details I'll get to that now. But for the rest, hey, thanks for stopping by. The first thing I did in figuring out what I needed to run my lights is how much power would be required. So I planned for six 10 watt LED floodlights and a five meter LED strip at 36 watts. That gave me a total of 96 watts. Now I needed to figure out how many amps that would draw. The calculation for that is total watts divided by the voltage used. 96 watts divided by 12 volts equals 8 amps. So that led to my decision of using the Renogy Wanderer, a 10 amp charge controller. Next I needed to decide which battery to get. I wanted a lithium deep cycle battery and found this one rated at 7 amp hours. That rating means it will provide 12 volts and 7 amps for one hour. So the calculation for how long my lights would run on a full battery is this. Battery capacity divided by load current. In my case it's around 52 minutes which is plenty of time as I won't be spending much time out in the shed with each visit. The solar panel will supply plenty of power to quickly keep the battery charged. Now to figure out how long it will take for a solar panel to recharge a depleted battery, this is the calculation. The Renogy 50 watt panel has a charging current rated at 2.69 amps, so that means for my system, 2 hours and 36 minutes to recharge. Now these calculations I'm showing are under ideal conditions which don't always exist so the actual figures are probably not going to be the same as the calculations. Now I want to talk about protecting the system. I use these inline blade fuse connectors to protect against any power surge or short circuits. They're designed so that their internal metal strip will melt and open the circuit if the current goes above their rated amp protection. I put a 10 amp fuse between the controller's positive battery input and the battery's positive terminal. I also put a 10 amp fuse between the controller's positive load input and the main switch and I put a 5 amp fuse between the controller's positive solar panel input and the solar panel. The fuses should be slightly higher than the circuit's amp use. This provides protection while at the same time allowing for any momentary spikes that may occur but not be dangerous to the system. I use 14 gauge wire for the floodlights now that size wire can handle about twice the current I'm actually using. As I mentioned earlier I didn't use any solder connections. I used a combination of blade connectors, two input and two to one input WAGO type connectors. This automatic wire stripper I have works great and makes quick work in preparing the wire. 
Connecting the wires to the controller is very easy. There's a screw at each terminal that opens and closes a clamp that keeps the wire in place. I hope this video inspires you to look further into setting up your own system. It's not as difficult as you may be thinking. I know it wasn't for me once I got started with it. Let me know in the comments if you plan to take action. Hey, thanks for watching. I'll catch you on the next video.